design idea I've kind of landed on is to kind of somehow incorporate the lover house on a vest of some sort. I randomly had the idea today to do It's Been A Long Time Coming. And I was like, I don't want to just have words. Like I want to have something more interesting. And so then I was thinking maybe I could knit a bunch of like symbols, one for each album, like scattered around the vest with like the words in the middle. That's the back. And that's the front. So I'm just thinking how I'm going to lay out and like space out all the crochet icons. So I think what I'm going to do is have three icons here. So they'll probably be about like that big, if you can kind of get a vibe <laughs> for what I'm doing. And then I'll have five across the bottom and one here and one here, like kind of in these like little spaces that I've got here. I think that should space out well. Um, I think trying to fit more than three here might be pushing it. So yeah, I definitely got enough space for 10. And yeah, I think I'm gonna, start kind of experimenting a little bit with crocheting some of these icons and we'll see we'll see how i go i'll check in with you once i have something to show you okay i think i might have slayed like i don't know this is what i have for the cow girl cowboy hat whatever for debut i've done a few attempts this is kind of where i've landed Kind of, it's a little bit of trial and error, I think is gonna be the case with all of these. Does this look like a cowgirl hat? Like, the more I look at it, the less I think it looks like a cowgirl hat. But like, at first glance, I'm like, oh, you can tell what that is, right? Right? <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit too symmetrical. This is my like sketch that I did. Not that this looks that much more like a cowgirl hat, but I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit more wonky, but it's just like a bit hard to do with crochet like I'm trying you know to freehand this I think I'm gonna leave it for now if I come back to it later on and I'm like that just doesn't look like a cargo hat I'll fix it but for now I think it will do and size wise I think it's good basically what I'm doing is I'm using what this it's not exactly black it's kind of like a charcoal but I think it works I'm not buying new yarn for this I'm using that as like an outline I'm using slip stitches and surface crochet to do that so around the edges it's just slip stitches and then I don't even really know what I've done here but across the front I just surface crocheted I think it's just I kind of like stick the hook through like into in between two stitches and then out the next two stitches like in the gaps basically between the stitches more or less kind of <laughs> and then I like do a slip stitch and it just kind of works <laughs> I don't know I think it's called surface crochet. I've done it before, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure if that's what it is, but I, th I think it is. So anyway, I don't even know if I'm doing it right, but yeah, this is what we kind of have so far. Obviously I'm going to block all of these and that's going to definitely like help kind of just like flatten them out and I can like shape them more kind of exactly how I want. But for now, this is good. I did actually already crochet a 13 a few days ago. So I'm going to attempt to do the outline on that now and see if it works because the three was just like a little bit hard to do and I was kind of gonna have to like really use some blocking magic but yeah I'm gonna see how I can how I can make this look more like a three and uh, the one should be easy so I'm gonna do that one next <laughs> Okay, this is where my lack of crochet experience, I just like, I haven't crocheted in a while, comes into play. So that is not a three. <laughs> that is somehow, somehow this has turned, like, this is what I, I wanted to be like, super like, curvy, and then to like, I don't even know, it's just, it's not, it's not giving what I needed to give, okay? It just, <laughs> it just, it isn't, it's not working. I don't know how I'm gonna fix this, but I think I'm gonna have to unravel what I've done in the purple as well. And come up with a new plan on how I'm gonna make this look like a three. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna have to experiment a bit. I mean, the main thing that I've just been doing to like create shapes and stuff is, but is like switching between the stitches that I'm using. So I'm like going between double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet and slip stitches to kind of you know, create shapes, but I think that's not working well enough. Also like decreases, the decreases worked to like create this curve here, 
but once I had the slip stitch on it, it like flattened it out. So I don't know how to make it curve with the slip stitch as well. I'm not sure, but I think I'm gonna have to give this a bit more thought before I do anything else. I can show it a bit better here, but like, do you see the vision? Like, imagine this is a bit more like pinched, but like, do you see the vision? It, it, it should work, but for some reason it's not. <laughs> so it just occurred to me that I'm crocheting a number, very generic thing. So I'm just looking up a YouTube tutorial on how to do it. So hopefully this will be the final attempt because I'm actually going to get legit instructions on how to do this rather than trying to figure it out myself. So <laughs> that took me longer than I would like to admit to realize that that was the best way to go about this, but it's okay. Do three double crochets. We'll do one. Yeah, we're going to go back into there again. Let's do another double crochet. Two. I'm going to do one double crochet in the last three chains. You should have three chains left. I'm going to do one double crochet in the last three. So one double crochet in the next stitch. I don't know why it never occurred to me to just like do increases. <laughs> like I was focusing so much on decreases, but obviously increases make so much more sense for creating like a round edge. YouTube tutorials is the way to go, my friend. So that's my number three. You can see it a bit better now. I'm gonna do the outline now, which I think will help because I, I, I didn't love how thick this middle bit is, but I do feel like it is quite reminiscent of like the, the 13 that um, Taylor Swift draws on her hand. So I don't hate it, but yeah, I think uh, it definitely looks a lot better than the ones that I had before. I had to join more yarn because I ran out from what I had used previously. But yeah, doing those increases makes so much sense. Um, if you don't crochet, by the way, sorry, if <laughs> this makes sense to you, but anyway, very happy with this. Uh, I'm gonna see how many more YouTube tutorials I can use for the rest of the icons. I feel like it won't be as easy to find as a number, but you never know. Okay, the outline is done. This one definitely needs a bit of maneuvering. Like I need to like kind of round these out a little bit more. It's just a bit hard. Once you add the outline, it kind of straightens everything out. But I think with a bit of blocking and once I like sew it down and I can kind of maneuver it to where I want it to be, I really don't think it's going to be a huge issue. I mean, even like that, it still looks like a three. So I'm happy with that. I've done this little boot. I'm not exactly sure how much it looks like a cowgirl boot, but I think with like the way I shape it, like if I like do that and like really kind of accentuate and emphasize certain things. And once I do the outline, I feel like I'll try and like trace the exact kind of shape that I want. Should be able to work, we'll see. So I've just finished the red part of the scarf um, I just need to do the outline this took quite a few trials to kind of get the shape that I wanted for this um, like loop part but we got there then I just did like I don't know I just finessed something here in the middle which when I outline it will make more sense it's kind of like where the scarf like ties around and then this is like the bottom little like bit of the scarf for reference that was my drawing probably not the best drawing I've ever done but <laughs> yeah I think um more or less it's close enough. <laughs> so happy with how this has turned out and we'll do the outline bit now and hopefully that will make it look more like a scarf. But I think so far, I mean, it's giving like <laughs> a ribbon right now, but I think once I have the outline, it will make more sense. Okay, I think I have made this harder on myself than it needed to be because it's just looking a bit funny. I technically only had one more little like bit to do. Sorry, there's like so many ends under here, but I just don't think it looks like a scarf. <laughs> I just think it looks like a, it just looks strange. I think I'm gonna undo it. And what I'm gonna do is just make it like, kind of like a long semicircle. And then maybe I'll find a way to have like little bits of yarn, like little tassels or something at the end. So that it's like obvious that it's a scarf. I don't know, I need to figure out how to do that. But I think that will be easier <laughs> than what I've done. I think I made it too complicated, so yeah. I'm gonna redo this one. So much trial and error with these little things, but I'm actually, I'm having a fun time kind of just like figuring it out and I'm really kind of regaining my crochet kind of like mojo and I don't know, it's fun. It's a bit annoying when I'm like, oh, I have to undo this, 
but uh, they don't take that long to make because they're so small. So it's, it's really okay. <laughs> this looks a lot better. I mean, it's a little bit curly whirly right now. But yeah, this is what we're looking at. So I think I'm gonna just like cut these and then just like slip stitch on or something like so on, I don't know, on some little bits of yarn on each uh, end and then I'll do the outline and then this will be done. So much happier with how this looks. Good call <laughs> on my part to scrap the original version. <laughs> so I've tried to like tie on a few little strands and they just look like so like spiky right now. I'll just try and focus it. My camera's having a really hard time focusing. Okay, there we go. Like it just looks so spiky right now, but I feel like once this is blocked, it'll chill out and I can like straighten out these strands because just right now they're just, they've got a mind of their own and there's nothing I can really do but I think once once it's blocked they'll just kind of they'll relax and then it should <laughs> should be okay if not I'll probably just cut them off but hopefully it doesn't because I think it really helps I think having the little tass tassels at the bottom is really gonna help just like really show that it's a scarf right now I feel like it looks like some kind of spiky monster <laughs> uh yeah we'll need to make sure blocking does its thing but I think I think it will be okay fingers crossed this <laughs> looks so funny <laughs> I'm going to do the outline and then I actually think I'm going to block this one right now because I just want to know that it's going to work and if it's not going to work I'm going to reassess. <laughs> so I'd rather like know that now than like wait till later on when I block everything. So I think I'm going to yeah just do this outline and then block it and then report back but <laughs> I just I can't get over how funny this looks like just looks like it has like like little legs at the bottom like little it's like like a like a spider <laughs> i don't know hi i have no idea how long it's been since i last filmed i've had a bunch of other things uh, other projects and stuff come up that had more urgent deadlines than this so I took a little bit of a break from my little crochet adventure but i have returned <laughs> Concept in a few weeks time so yeah we've already surpassed the one month we are now less than a month away from the concert. I'm so excited. And I just thought I would show you my progress on this little seagull. I also blocked the scarf and it definitely worked. So I'll show you that in a second or at some point. But I'm halfway through, well not really, I'm like two thirds of the way through this seagull. I had no idea how to do a seagull. <laughs> I was like, how do I do this? I wanted to be in a like, specific shape. I'm kind of basing it off the 1989 cardigan, like the seagulls on the back. Um, that's kind of what I based my little drawing off. Side note, I think my 1989 cardigan is actually arriving today. I got it for my birthday and my brother said today that he got a shipping notification. <laughs> my birthday was in September. The cardigan came out in like October or November or something and it's January, end of Jan, and it's finally arriving. So I probably could have just waited until that. I, I mean, I didn't know it until not that long ago that it was coming, but anyway, I'm just going off this drawing, so it's not really a big deal. But what I decided to do was to just basically zoom in on this drawing on my iPad and literally just like crochet and like just make it kind of match the shape and like just do decreases and stuff to make it match and I don't know it's like it's like oh, let me see if I can hold this up it's like kind of working like that's the thing it's like I can't really show you very well because it'll fall but yeah, it's kind of working. So I'm just gonna do the other wing. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It doesn't really look like a seagull right now, but it's like once it has another wing, I think I've done the outline and I like shape it. Obviously once I block it, I'm gonna shape it to be like as close as I can get to this photo. I think uh, it'll look like a seagull. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that's, that's the update on that. I'll show you once I finished it, what it looks like. Okay, seagull is done. Hehe. <laughs> I think it looks like a seagull, like we got like the beak here and like the wings and you know, <laughs> the wings kind of like flap. Anyway, I'm going to do the outline now and let's hope it still looks like a seagull after that. So here's the scarf, by the way, post blocking. You can see these little tassels look a lot more <laughs> normal now. This is the seagull. It looks a bit funky, not going to lie. I feel like when I block it, I can make these edges maybe look a little bit neater. I don't know. Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, that does not look like a seagull. And then other times I'm like... Yeah, that looks like a seagull, I guess. I don't know. I think we'll just have to see 
I don't know. I might fix it. I'm gonna leave the ends not woven in for now because I'm not convinced <laughs> yet. But these are the other ones. You got 13, the boot, the uh, hat. None of these have been blocked yet. Just this one because I wanted to know about the tassels and see if it would work, which it did. But yeah, okay, so that's that. This is the snake. This also took several attempts, but I'm actually quite happy with how it looks. It's got a little head and, you know, a little body. So it's kind of, I tried to, it was a bit bigger the first time I made it, but I don't know. I'm a bit worried that it's too big, but I still have to fit four more. I think I've decided I'm going to put this seagull here and the scarf here just because the scarf kind of has a similar vibe to the snake in terms of the way it's knit, sorry, crocheted. And it just looked a bit weird there. So I've swapped those two, but I kind of like, it's kind of like going to go this way. So it's like in order of the albums and then there's red and the 1989 reputation. So what I still need to do is a little love heart for lover. And then I can make that kind of smaller. And then also, uh, I'm gonna do like a, I'm gonna attempt at least to do like a mirror ball for folklore. So we'll see how that goes. I can also make that kind of small, it's just a circle. And then I'm gonna do like a little tree for Evermore. And then like a little moon and star for Midnight. So I feel like all of those I can make fairly smallish, like kind of more in line with these two, or maybe even this one in terms of size. I feel like this one, and this one are quite big and then this one just kind of is like quite wide so anyway i should be able to fit all of those across here so fingers crossed because i really don't feel like re-knitting i mean re-crocheting <laughs> sorry this snake it was just hard to kind of get the right kind of like spiral effect without making it this big but anyway that's how we're going so yeah tracking well This did not take me very long at all because I just followed a YouTube tutorial. But this is my little heart. Um, it's really cute. I think when I sew in the ends, I'll try and close this hole up a little bit. But yeah, it's cute and small. So then I think up next is the mirror ball. I'm trying to just do them in order because then I can just like place them as I go. I genuinely am a bit nervous about this one. My idea was to do in different shades of grey, like to make a circle, um, but each row is a different shade of grey. Like I'll probably do them in like, I don't know, single or like half double crochets. And then when I do the outline, oh, I still need to do the outline for this actually. When I do the outline, I'll also like do like lines across um, using slip stitches or whatever to then kind of create that effect. I don't know. <laughs> it might be a bit ambitious. We'll see how I go. I might have to change to something else if it's too hard. But anyway, I'll add the outline to this. I kind of like it without the outline. Like I don't think it needs it, but I want to be consistent across all of them. So I guess I'm going to have to do that. Okay, so it's the next day. And <laughs> this is what I'm currently working with. I think it looks horrific right now, <laughs> not gonna lie. I haven't done like, okay, the plan was basically to do like, you see how I've done, I might have to just flip the camera around, just give me a second. So you can see how I've done these lines, like they're kind of curvy lines. And then I was gonna do like the same kind of lines, like curvy, I don't know. I don't explain the right word right now, like semicircle ish <laughs> curvy lines going horizontally i just think this looks so bad and it looks anything like a disco ball i just i don't know my vision not executed and also the amount of ends i would already have to weave in but then i'd also have to add in all these extra lines i'm just like i feel like i'm wasting a lot of black yarn which is kind of too late but i don't know i don't know i'm not enjoying this and i think it looks really bad and doesn't look anything like what i imagined that it would look like which is really sad because i was actually really proud of the drawing i did I thought if I could replicate that in crochet, that would be amazing, but it's just, it's not, it's not happening. I don't know what I was doing, but I'm not, I'm not happy with how it looks. So I'm going to scrap this for a minute. I'm just going to leave it because maybe I'll come back to it. I don't know. I did like a cute little like thing that like that would be hanging off, which was cute. 
it's just, it's not, it's not it for me. I'm not, I'm not enjoying, I'm not, I'm not proud of it and I wanna be proud of everything I do. So I'm either gonna have to come back to this and try to do it in another way, or I'm going to have to come up with a new um, icon for folklore, which is just hard because obviously you could do the trees for folklore as well, because obviously there's like the trees in the album cover. Hold on, I'm gonna let you look at my face. <laughs> I know you probably don't want to stare at that thing for any longer, neither do I. So I could do like the trees for Folklore because obviously in Folklore's album cover there's trees on it. But I feel like the green tree, like I just feel like it's giving ever more, especially like, I don't know, I think of like just the damn season and like trees just like feel more ever more for me. I don't know why. And then I just don't know, I have to like think about Folklore again and like think about all the songs. And if there's anything specific or just like, look, I, I could, you know what I could do? And I actually think this is probably my original idea, but then I forgot about it. I could crochet, oh my God, this would be so, I could, I could even knit this. I'm trying to think what would be easier. Probably still crochet, maybe knitting because of the shape of it. I could knit like, mm, this is so cute, this idea. I'm actually obsessed with it and I think I'm gonna do it. So we're all good. Definitely scrapping this ugly attempted mirror ball bit of a waste of time but it's fine and I think I might do like a mini little cardigan and like recreate the oh my god this might be a mission but recreate the cardigan obviously like the, the folklore cardigan I'm just trying to decide because I can use this cashmere that I was using a little bit for the mirror ball I've got quite a bit so I can definitely use it and it's like really soft and nice but I'm thinking maybe I could knit it and do some like mini cables but would that be like too hard to do in mini version hmm, I don't know okay I think I'm gonna do that because I feel like that's like the only other like icon ic iconic like folklore iconography <laughs> iconic iconography anyway I feel like the mirror ball is like very obviously folklore because of the song mirror ball but like it's not working so I feel like the cardigan is it like obviously the next thing that you think of when you think of folklore you think of cardigan the folklore cardigan it's like very obvious so yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. I could definitely crochet it as well, but I just feel like, like, cause that will probably look more consistent. But at the same time, I feel like knitting it makes more sense because it's a knit cardigan. Okay, this is gonna take a bit of work, but I'm actually excited. I think it'll be really, really cute. And I've done the little heart I weaved in the ends, the snake as well I weaved in the ends. I think it looks really cute. And I decided to weave in the ends with a seagull because I think this is as good as it's gonna get. So. Yeah, uh, that's kind of where we're at. So everything's weaved in at the moment and it's looking really cute. So this is the really fun part of the video where I had no idea, but I was recording in slow motion for several clips with no audio. Don't know how that happened, but basically this is the best I can do. I can just voice over and try and tell you what I was talking about. Um, yeah, that's just the situation. So at this point, I think I was just excited about my 1989 cardigan and talking about that. And then I'm just showing you what I've done so far of the folklore cardigan. Um, you can just see I done like one half of the cardigan and I did some cute little cables using my two millimeter needles actually and ended up with lots of ends. And then at this point I was also working on the second half. So I was just untangling everything <laughs> to show you that I was working on that <laughs> and then Basically my plan was to just like seam them together and create like a mini little button band using the blue. And I don't really know what else I was going on about, to be honest, that's basically the plan. That's, that's it, that was, that was my progress. <laughs> okay, and then at this point I had finished the mini cardigan. So happy with how it looks, I think it's adorable. And I done the little black outline, same as all the others using slip stitches. Um, so it was kind of like half crocheted, half, half knit. And yeah, that's kind of how you can see all of them laid out so far, all the ones that I had done. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that hat. I think I'm gonna, fi yeah, I'm gonna fix the hat, <laughs> makes sense. Um, yeah, and so then I just kind of had to do the tree and the star and the moon. So I was just kind of figuring out the spacing, but so far really happy with how it's looking. So 
so you could just see me working on the tree just before I ended up using a YouTube tutorial for the tree so that was my progress so far on the tree I just needed to do the little brown stump um, and I think I'm going to show you the yarn yep that I'm using for the tree uh, I ended up going with this like little light brown that I had left over um, it's the only brown I had so I didn't want to go and buy more brown yarn even though it's a little bit lighter than I probably would have wanted to go but it does the job so making use of what we have um, but yeah that's that's what I was talking about I'm not sure what else I could possibly have to say about this okay and then here is my finished little tree just showing you close up as I can get the little outline around it I'm not sure how well you can see the outline because of the lighting but it's there um, it looks perfect honestly in my opinion it turned out exactly how I planned perfect size and yeah not much more to say so now I just had to kind of get on with doing the star and the moon I think actually at this point I was already talking about how I had already done the star and the moon. So basically I found this yellow, neon yellow yarn that was like perfect for the color that I was kind of going for. And I had like just enough left over um, from a previous project from so long ago um, to use for the star and the moon. So that worked out super well. And I ended up actually using a YouTube tutorial for these ones as well, because it was just easy. Like a star and a moon is super generic. So I found um, the perfect tutorials to get the shapes that I wanted. And that you can see what I did and did the outline and everything looked really, really good. And they just came out like the perfect size and exactly kind of how I envisioned them. So even though the yarn was a little bit thicker than the other ones, it really didn't matter. And it doesn't matter that the tension was a little bit stiffer because the end of the day it's just getting seamed onto the vest so really not a big deal speaking of seaming i've cut ahead to when i started seaming the little crochet pieces on to the vest you can see they've all been blocked i don't know why i never filmed anything to do with the blocking process sorry about that but yeah i'd just done the the cowboy hat at that point and yeah it was really cool just to be able to like lift the vest up and have it not fall off like that was really um exciting to see it kind of coming together i just kind of use like an in and out stitch like i don't know anything about sewing i have no idea what stitches are called so really sorry i think i just looked up like how to sew crochet applique without the seams showing So there you can see I've just done the top three, the first three errors. I don't know why I was lifting the vest up, not sure what that achieved, but yeah. So really happy with how they were all looking, um, except I wasn't really sure about that little black, I don't even know, bump that kind of showed up. It happened with a few of them, but I feel like it was quite obvious on the 13, but I didn't end up doing anything about it. Honestly, I don't think I ever looked at it ever again. And paid attention to that little black mark but I think it was just annoying me at the time but I don't know something about the way I attached the yarn I think caused that to happen so it's probably just my fault but anyway other than that really happy with how everything looks to announce that exactly a month after starting I have officially finished my Aristotle vest it looks so much better than I thought it was gonna look like even though I had already laid it all out and I knew kind of what it was gonna look like for some reason like 
being able to just like hold it up and see everything all together it's just like it's just so much better than I thought it was gonna be and like I feel like it really ties in the back because I feel like before I had all of the icons crochet applique whatever you want to call it on the vest I was kind of like mm, maybe it's a bit boring but no it is not boring at all it is so so I'm just so happy with it I didn't want to be like it's so good like it sounds braggy but like it's so good like I'm just <laughs> I'm so so happy with it I just want to like stare at it forever and I just can't stop looking at it it's just is <laughs> good anyway I'm gonna quickly try it on and show you what it looks like on so this is the front this is the back it's just mm, <laughs> literally oh, I can't believe this took me a month I did kind of start like slowing down definitely towards the latter half but still like I it's kind of nice that I finished it exactly a month after I still have a few weeks till the tour so no stress at all and I've just got to figure out what I'm gonna wear with it I might just wear these shorts honestly just for kind of like comfort or I might wear like a cute skirt we'll just have to see but yeah I need to figure that out and obviously makeup and hair I think will tie the whole look together but I will obviously need to figure all that out too so yeah hi uh it's Eris Torte what the actual hell I don't I I have no words. I can't believe this is finally happening for me. <laughs> if you didn't know, I'm attending Melbourne Night 3, so this is the last of three Melbourne shows that she's playing. It has been... The only word I can think of to use is torture, seeing so many people that I know and don't know <laughs> on my social media attending the last two nights, knowing it's, you know, 30 minutes from my house and that I wasn't there but it will be worth it. It will be worth the wait and the pain that was the past two nights because it's her last Melbourne show, so I'm sure she will be pulling out all the stops even though I don't think it could possibly get better than last night's surprise songs, but I don't want to talk about it because it hurts too much. Anyway, I'm so excited. I'm going to start getting ready because I just want to be ready nice and early so I'm not stressing at the last minute because I'm a bit nervous about do my makeup and stuff but yeah I'm going to get ready and then I will show you the full fit <laughs> I'm also so happy to report that it is perfect weather today for wearing my vest so it couldn't have gone better it's I think a top of 22 degrees today which means by the time the concert happens tonight it'll be even cooler which is just perfect because it means I'm not gonna be sweating my ass off so yeah I'm just I'm thrilled because for a second there, I thought I was going to have to wear this vest in 32 degree heat because that's what the forecast was looking like about a week ago. And uh, thankfully in true Melbourne fashion, can't trust the weather forecast until like the day of. So very, very happy with how that worked out. And I'm so excited to wear it. And I'm so excited to show you the full outfit and my hair and makeup. I did a little practice run yesterday because I was so nervous that I was going to like, I don't know, mess it up. So I did a little practice run. So feeling good about my hair, makeup, less so, but should be fine. Anyway, I'm gonna get ready now. You are so excited. I don't think I don't think you actually understand, but anyway, it's it's starting to feel real. Okay, I just filmed this whole clip in slow motion. So I'm gonna film it again because this keeps happening to me now all of a sudden. Anyway, so it is I can't even say the morning after, it's the day after. I am a bit of a shell of a human, so apologies if I'm a little bit low energy. My voice sounds a bit not the best. But this is the this is I want I want to show you my like true raw state of being <laughs> the day after the best night of my life. I didn't end up getting a ton of footage of my full outfit on my camera because I don't know I just forgot to do it before I left the house. So everything I have for me at home is on my phone. So I'm gonna include some clips here so you can see the full fit. Um, and then I did get like a couple of clips uh, outside the stadium and um, when I was like. Just got in and I was waiting 
but that was basically it. So I wore the vest as we know, and I wore a cute little thrifted skirt that I actually bought last year for my book photo shoot. So I was happy to be able to wear that again. It worked perfectly with the vest. And then I wore my platform tubes, which my feet were still sore, but I think it was better than if I'd worn like cowgirl boots. I mean, the girls next to me that were wearing them, they just took them off straight away. So it wasn't worth the money for me. So I'm glad that I wore shoes that I already had. And then I have my cute little purple bag that I actually bought for my outfit that I'm wearing in Sydney, but it worked for this one as well. So that was great. And then hair and makeup. I'm not really confident when it comes to hair and makeup. I really just like decided like the day before what I was gonna do. I ended up just like curling my hair. I got these cute little like butterfly clip things and put those in my hair and little hair gems, which is also really cute. I'm definitely gonna wear those again next week. And then on my face, I did like a little like bejeweled face situation, face makeup situation. Like I just did like a really basic base. <laughs> basic base and then did like the little gems face gems around my eyes and it actually looked really good in the end I was like wow okay makeup artist <laughs> um so yeah I was really really happy with how it all came together and I got quite a few compliments which was really nice of people because I mean I was admiring so many people <laughs> there's one thing I learned last night is that like when people come up to me, I'm I'm like totally fine to interact with them, but I really struggle to like go up to people. So like when people come up to me to compliment my outfit, it was like so nice. Like I just like would admire people's outfits from afar, but like couldn't bring myself to like go up to them and say I love their outfits. So anyway, maybe next week I'll have a bit more confidence. It was also the same with trading bracelets. Like there was so many like really confident little like kids that came up to me and I was to trade bracelets, which was so nice. And of course I did, but like, I didn't necessarily have the confidence to go up to other people. So who knows, like maybe, yeah, next week will also be different. Maybe I'll be a little bit more confident, but it was just such a beautiful, just wholesome, heartwarming atmosphere. Everyone's just like so excited. It's just like one thing that we all just like love. And yeah, I was just, in my absolute element. <laughs> I can't even summarize, like I can't put into words how incredible the concert was. Like if you've been, you will understand what it is like. It's just the most special environment. It's magical. It's just, I can't, like I actually, I can't find words to put, I can't find words to describe it, but if you've been, you'll understand. And if you don't just know it's, it's the most incredible thing literally in the world <laughs> ever. And yeah, I've mentioned it in my previous videos, but this was my first time seeing her in 10 years. I honestly barely remember the last time I saw her, which was the Red Tour, it was so long ago. I've become an even bigger fan since then and just unfortunately haven't been able to go to the last two concerts that she had in Australia for the 1989 and Reputation tours. And my brother and I have been huge, huge fans and it's something that we really bonded over for, you know, like 10 years. And we've also never been able to go together. We actually had tickets to see her together in London in 2020. We were gonna like meet up in London and have this whole like, you know, experience then. And then that of course didn't happen. So to finally, finally be able to go together and like, just sharing that experience was so, so special. And we're gonna do it all over again next week, which is amazing. But yeah, I have this video of us in the intro. It's mostly me, cause like I was just not being normal at all. I was, I don't even know what happened to me. I just like emotions just came over me. And yeah, I was filming us during the intro and it's so funny because I don't know if I can show the video because I really don't want to get copyright claimed cause that already happened to me on one of my previous videos. I might even show it without sound because because I feel like you can understand like the shift in emotions even without sound. But basically I was like watching the intro and I was like so excited obviously, but I was like normal, like I was a normal person. And then the second she comes on stage, I just like, you can just see in the video. It's so funny watching it back. Cause it's just like a snap second. And I am like bawling my eyes out. Like, I don't know what happened. I wasn't sure how I was going to react because I've, I've obviously seen clips from the tour. Like I know, you know, what happens. My brother actually hasn't, he's been very good at avoiding as, as many spoilers as he possibly could. But yeah, I was never going to be able to do that because I'm way too chronically online, but I just didn't know how I, I was going to react. It wasn't the like surprise of seeing what happens. It was just like the, the reality of the fact that this woman who I have like idolized, just like been obsessed with for so long. Like, I don't even know how many years has it been now, like 15 years or something since I've become a fan. I became a fan in like 2009. And you know, it's been 10 years since I saw her live. Like it's just the fact that she was in the flesh in front of me. And also just that I was like at the Eras tour that I've been like so excited for for so long. It just like 
all came over me at once and I just was <laughs> bawling my eyes out immediately. Cried throughout the whole like first two songs and then like several times throughout the show I cried again. Never as much as I did at the start but like oh my god it was just so special and I'm so excited to do it all over again. I hopefully won't be as insane next week. I think I'll be a bit more normal <laughs> and I won't be crying as much. I'm just so happy we have these memories and I was so happy that I got to make something for it and really like put in the effort. So much time and effort goes into it for them to just kind of be over so quickly, but I'm glad we get to go to the concert again next week and I, I won't be wearing the vest again, but I'll be wearing something else. But yeah, I'll always like have that vest as a memory. I'll also always have this because I kept my light up bracelet. It's still going. Not sure when this is gonna stop, but I literally have to keep this in a drawer because otherwise it's gonna keep me up all night with just like flashing lights. Yeah, I have these cute bracelets as also as memories. Hopefully we'll accumulate some more next week. Also want to mention the surprise songs because it's a big deal. I just about nearly like threw my phone into the wall when I was watching the live stream on night two and saw that she sang Getaway Car, mashed up with August, mashed up with the other side of the door and then proceeded to go to the piano and sing This Is Me Trying. Like I was done at that point because I was already so upset for missing you or losing me. And then that was like, oh, uh, like, she hates me like this is my like punishment for not getting tickets for the first two nights like this is what's happening right now <laughs> like that's how i felt getaway car is like top three for me so that was that was a struggle that was a real struggle but she's unhinged this woman like she's doing mashup she's just pulling out all the stops she sang come back be here mashed up with daylight which was just like not on my bingo card. Like, I just did not expect that. I was expecting something that she hadn't played before yet. I was expecting, like, she was probably gonna do, like, at least one that she hadn't played before. That didn't happen. Um, she also sang Teardrops on my guitar, which broke me into a million pieces because I was just so so excited to get something from debut so that, you know, we can really experience the full Eras tour. I actually had a Teardrops on my guitar bracelet on my wrist, so I think I manifested that. Yeah, I just wasn't expecting any of those songs. I was either expecting something she hadn't played before or if she was playing something that she'd played before that it would be like, kind of like Getaway Car, like more like fan faves. I don't know, I was expecting, I was really hoping for Right Where You Left Me. Still, there's still hope. I'm obviously going to another show, so there's still hope. But no, of course, I'm so happy with any song, honestly. And I was just, it was also like really cool to hear some like songs I just like wasn't expecting, like super random. <laughs> Love all of those songs. So yeah, but uh, Night 2 really, mm, I'm, I'm still a little salty for not being present for that, but it is what it is. It happens, it's life. Anyway, I feel like I'm just rambling, rambling, rambling. I could talk about this concert all day long, but I uh, probably need to end this vlog because I'm sure it's probably getting way too long. If you have made it to the end and you've watched all three of these vlogs, uh, thank you so much for your investment in the process of me creating this outfit and also just my experience at this concert. It means so much to me that there are other people who care about this. I'm honestly just doing it because it's been really fun for me to just like document the process and it'll be really nice for me to be able to like look back on like what I went through <laughs> in preparation for this concert. It's just like the most special memory that I think I'll ever have in my life. <laughs> so I don't know. I think maybe only like my wedding will probably be able to top this, maybe. I honestly don't know. I actually think my wedding will probably be a lot more stressful than this was. So this might be for sure like top best experience of my life, <laughs> which considering how young I am, I feel like is a bit concerning, but <laughs> is what it is. If you watched all three parts of this series, make sure to give this video a like. And if you're not subscribed, please do so because you clearly like my videos enough to watch all three of these like 30 plus minute vlogs. I have some very exciting content planned so hopefully I'll be able to get those videos out to you soon. I might need to take a break next week because like I said I'm going to Sydney over the weekend. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to film and edit anything before next week but we'll just see. If you didn't know I have a Patreon where I do exclusive content. You get early access to these videos and much more. The link will be in the description so you can check it out if you're interested in supporting me in that way. I'll put the names of my Cable Cuties patrons on the screen. Thank you so so much for your support. It means the absolute world to me. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok. You obviously you can check out my patterns. The links will also be in the description and you can pre-order my book. I feel like I'm just, I'm just plugging a million things at you right now, but it has to be said. I hope you enjoyed this little series. Let me know if you want me to do more series like this or more vlogs where I'm like working on a project. Uh, it was really, really fun for me, but I feel like maybe I'll make 
you know, I'll try and, and do it in one video next time rather than three. This was a big project, so kind of makes sense. But yeah, let me know if you like this kind of video and you want to see more of it because I'd be more than happy to do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.